Before to explain the determination of sequences in polyolefins by NMR, it is important to know the nomenclature used. The nomenclature is going to let us to identify clearly the carbon atom that gives a specific peak in NMR. Then I am going to give some examples of how to calculate the theoretical chemical shift of carbon atoms in a carbon-13 NMR spectrum through the use of tables. A nomenclature in polymers should take into account the position of the atom in the molecule and also the stereo and the ratio regularity. Just to remember, the stereo regularity comes from the presence of asymmetric carbons in some polymers, as it is shown in this example, where the substituent group X can be in the same side of the, the zigzag polymer chain or what is the same to have all the chiral centers with the same configuration. In this case we have isotactic sequences M or meso. The other situation is to have all the X substituents alternated from the zigzag polymer chain or having the asymmetric carbon always with opposite configuration. In this case, we have the syndiotatic sequences R or racemic. The ratio regularity comes from the statistic nature of the chain polymerization where an asymmetric monomer formed by a methylene carbon 1 and a methene carbon 2 normally inserts in the growing polymeric chain with the methylene carbon bonded to the metal and the tertiary carbon to the last polymeric unit. This normal insertion is called 1-2, but as the polymerization is statistic, it can occur errors or an inversion, and the coming unit insert 2-1. These two situations will result in different polymeric structures that can be differentiated by carbon-13 NMR. The nomenclature used in the study of ethylene propylene copolymers by carbon-13 NMR are the following. The nomenclature of Karman and Wilkes used the letter P for the primary carbon methyl, the letter S for the secondary carbon methylene, and T for the tertiary carbon methene. It is used Greek letters to indicate the nearest methene carbon in either direction. For example, the carbon P beta beta is the methyl carbon bonded to the CH that is in position beta from both closest methene. The carbon S alpha alpha is the methylene that is bonded to the methene alpha on the left and the methene alpha on the right. We can identify better this carbon if we consider the further methene atoms. Therefore, this carbon can be named as the S gamma alpha alpha delta, as the further methene atoms are in position gamma on the left and delta on the right. This is useful till the delta position that represent four chemical bonds from the carbon that we want to identify. In NMR, the chemical shift of one atom is influenced till four chemical bonds of distance, that means till the delta atom. In the last example, it is shown the T beta beta carbon, that is the methene that is beta from both next methene. This nomenclature takes into account the inversion, but not the stereochemistry. To take into account the stereochemistry, the prefixes M, meso, and or R, racemic, are used. For example, the carbon M 
S alpha gamma means a secondary carbon that is in position alpha from the methane atom on the left and gamma from the methane atom on the right. The prefix M means that both methane have the same configuration, or what is the same, the substituents are in the same side of the polymeric chain. Another nomenclature uses signs to indicate the, the configuration. To indicate that the substituent show the same configuration, the signs plus plus or minus minus are used. And to indicate that the substituents are racemic, plus minus or minus plus are used. This example shows that the carbon-6 has on the left a methane atom that is alpha plus and the next is beta minus from it, meaning that both tertiary carbon have opposite configuration. On the right, this same carbon has a methane beta minus and other delta minus, meaning that they have the same configuration and also the same that met the methane beta on the left side. Another nomenclature, not very common, uses numbers 0 for the methylene, 1 for the methane meso, and 1 with a bar over it for the racemic methane. So, a sequence 0, 1, 0, 1 with a bar, 0, 0 means methylene, methane, methylene, methane, methylene, methylene, in which both methane have opposite configuration. This nomenclature takes into account the inversion and the stereochemistry. Another nomenclature very used is to call the monomeric units by the first letter of the name. For example, ethylene is E and propylene is P. Like in the following example, we have the units P, 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 E. To take into account the stereochemistry, the name of the sequence is followed by the configuration RM. Sequences have also been named using the configuration meso or racemic with a subscript meaning the number of methylene between methane. In the example, M1 means one methylene between methane with the configuration meso. And R3 means three consecutive methylene between methane with the racemic configuration. This last nomenclature take into account the inversion and the stereochemistry. The nomenclature used in the study of ethylene alpha olefins by carbon-13 NMR uses numbers for the branches and Greek letters for the main chain. It is used the letter B that comes from branch and a subscript to indicate the length of the branch. For example, B1 means a branch with one carbon, that is a methyl branch. B2 is an ethyl branch, B4 is a butyl branch, and Bn a branch with n carbon atoms. To indicate a carbon of the branch, there are used numbers starting with the methyl group as 1. For branch point carbons, Br is used. The methylene of the backbone are labeled with Greek letters being alpha, the carbon adjacent to the methane, and so on. For methylene, between equal branches, two Greek letters are used. In this example, the methylene in position alpha from one branch point and gamma from the other is called alpha gamma B1 because the branches have only one carbon atom. In the case to have methylene between different branches, the carbon is named X, Y, Bn, Bm. In this example, the methylene alpha delta B1 before means that this carbon is in position alpha from the methane of the methyl branch and in position delta from the methane of the butyl branch.
Here we have a typical carbon-13 NMR spectrum of the anethylene propylene copolymer with some attribution over the peaks. In the next table, most of the peaks of secondary and tertiary carbon of anethylene propylene copolymer were assigned. We can see the peak number, the chemical shift, and in the third column, the corresponding carbon atom are identified. We are going to take peaks 1 and 14b to find the corresponding sequence from the nomenclatures. For example, peak 1 that appears between 48.1 and 47.6 ppm is a methylene carbon that is part of a PPPP sequence. And the configuration of the two first methene is racemic. The second and third are meso, and the third and fourth methene are racemic, or what is the same have different configuration. The following example shows various nomenclatures of a tertiary carbon or methene that appear are 3116 ppm. The first one indicates that the carbon is tertiary and that is in position beta from the next methene on the left and gamma from the other methene. The second nomenclature specifies the configuration. The carbon is racemic from the methene on the left and there is a methylene between both. M2 means that the carbon is meso of the methene carbon on the right and that there are two methylene between them. The last nomenclature indicates a sequence formed by a methene, methylene, methene, methylene, methylene, methene, and that the first methene is of different configuration from the second, and the last two are meso. In this table, the chemical shift of all primary carbon atoms of different ethylene propylene copolymer sequences are shown. For example, the peak 25 between 21.2 and 20.5 ppm corresponds to the primary carbon or methyl bonded to the branch point that is in position beta from both nearest methene. The configuration is MR, what means that the first two methene have the same configuration and the third one has the opposite. Another nomenclature shows that the sequence is as follows. Methene, methylene, methene, methylene, methene. With the last two methene with different stereochemistry. In the following part of this presentation, I want to show how to calculate the theoretical chemical shift of a carbon atom. As the chemical shift of an atom in NMR depends on its chemical environment, till about four chemical bonds of distance, it is possible to predict the chemical shift of almost any carbon consulting tables. We are going to start with the paraffins that are the tables used for the polyolefins. We are going to use the table made by Liederman and Adams that it is shown here. They improve and extend the predicted parameters calculated first by Grant and Paul. This table shows the constants B1 for a primary carbon, B2 for a secondary carbon, B3 for a tertiary, and B4 for a quaternary. Then there are constants called A for the influence of the alpha carbons from the carbon that we wanted to determine the chemical shift. The influence of those alpha carbon is different depending on the type of carbon. The carbon beta are not in the table because their influence in the chemical shift is already included in the parameters calculated by Liederman and Adam. Then there are constants for the carbon gamma and delta carbons, different depending on the type of the study carbon. But let's see examples of the use of this table. 
If we have to determine the chemical shift of a primary carbon, that is a methyl, we have to use only the part of the table corresponding to B1. B1 is the chemical shift of a primary carbon. A12 is the shift Q to a secondary carbon alpha from the primary carbon. A13 is the shift due to the tertiary carbon alpha from the primary carbon. A14 is the shift due to the quaternary carbon alpha from the primary carbon. Gamma 1 is the shift due to the carbon in the position gamma from the primary carbon. Delta 1 is the shift due to the carbon in the position delta to the primary carbon. So, if we want to calculate the chemical shift of the methyl carbon gamma delta in this figure, we use the equation that takes into account the additive chemical shift. That is, the chemical shift of a primary carbon gamma delta is equal to B1 plus the shift due to the alpha tertiary carbon plus two times the parameter gamma 1 because there are two carbon gamma and plus two times delta 1 due to the presence of two delta carbon. The result is 1963 ppm. This is called the calculate chemical shift. The experimental shift it was found to be 1992 ppm, what is very close. If we want to calculate the chemical shift of a secondary carbon, that is a methylene, we must use only the parameters corresponding to B2. As it can be seen, those parameters are different from those of the methyl. In this case, A22 is the shift due to a secondary carbon alpha from the secondary carbon. A23, the shift due to a tertiary carbon alpha from the secondary carbon. A24, the shift due to a quaternary carbon alpha from the secondary carbon. Gamma 2, the shift due to the carbon in the position gamma from the secondary carbon. And delta 2, the shift due to the carbon in the position delta to the secondary carbon. The calculated chemical shift of a secondary carbon alpha gamma is done as following. To the constant B2, that is 1534, is added the parameter for A22 that is 975 because there is one secondary carbon at the position alpha from the S alpha gamma. Then is added 1670 that is A23 because there is one tertiary carbon at the position alpha. As there are two atoms in position gamma, the parameter gamma 2 that is minus 2, 69, is multiplied by 2. Then it can be seen that there are three carbon in position delta, so the parameter delta 2, 0 0.25, must be multiplied by 3. The result is 37.16 ppm, and the experimental, experimental chemical shift is 37. 08 ppm. In the last example, I am showing you the determination of the calculated chemical shift for a tertiary carbon, a methane. This time we have the, to use the parameter for B3. Those parameters only go till the gamma atom, as it can be seen in the table. In this example, we calculate the chemical shift of a branch point of an ethylene one xin copolymer. The carbon is named BrB4. To the parameter B3, that is 2346, is added three times A32660 because there are three secondary carbon alpha. And then three times minus 2.07 because there are three gamma carbon from the carbon BrB4. 
So the calculate chemical shift for this tertiary atom is 37.05 ppm. The experimental values found in the lake literature are close to 38 ppm. The previous table that we have seen is exclusive for polyolefins. I am going to show you now a table that it can be used for olefinic carbon atoms. This can be useful to calculate, for example, terminal groups in polyolefins. The equation used to calculate the chemical shift in this case uses a constant 123.3 that is correspond to the chemical shift of an olefin in carbon. Then, there are additive parameters for saturated carbon alpha, beta, and gamma from the olefinic carbon 1. The aliphatic carbons bonded to the carbon 2 are named alpha, beta, and gamma line. There are also some steric corrections listed in the table below. Let's see an example of the use of this table. If we want to calculate the chemical shift of an olefinic carbon 1, we use the equation. So the chemical shift of carbon 1 is 123.3 plus 10.6 because there is only one carbon alpha from carbon 1 plus 7.2 for one carbon beta and minus 1.5 for a carbon gamma then is minus 7.9 because there is only one carbon alpha line. The steric corrections are zero because this is the value when alpha and alpha line are trans. The result is in this case 131.7 ppm. To calculate the chemical shift of carbon 2, we just call alpha the carbon bonded to carbon 2, and the others that are bonded to carbon 1 become alpha line, beta line, and gamma line. So the equation becomes equal to 123.3 plus 10.6, then minus all the line carbon, minus 7.9, minus 1.8, and plus 1.5 being the steric correction also zero, the final result is 125.7 ppm. Finally, we are going to see a table with parameters to calculate chemical shift in saturated carbon atoms that can be used with polymer containing functional groups. In the first column, we can see the different functional groups in the last four columns, the parameters for the substituent in position alpha, beta, gamma, and delta. There is a second table for steric corrections. Let's see the example of the polydiethylene glycol adipate. We are going to calculate the chemical shift of carbon A. First, it is used the constant minus 2.3 that correspond to the chemical shift of a saturated carbon without substituents. The methylene carbon A has on the left an oxygen ether atom in alpha whose parameters in the table is 49.0. Then it has carbon atoms in beta and in gamma so we add the corresponding costa, constants, 9.4 and minus 2.5. In the delta, there is a nester group with a parameter 0. On the right, the carbon A has a carbon in alpha, which constant is 9.1, and in beta, it has a nester bonded first by the oxygen group. So the constant is 6.5. Then there is a carbon in gamma, which constant is minus 2.5. And another carbon in delta with cons a constant 0 0.3. In this case, the steric correction is 0. 
the calculate chemical shift for this carbon A is 67 ppm. Another example is the determination of the chemical shift of carbon B. This carbon is in alpha of an ester group bonded with, with it by the carbonyl, so the constant is 22.6. Then there are carbons in beta and gamma, so there are added the constant 9.4 and minus 2. In position delta, there is an ether group, so the constant 0 0.3 is added. On the right, there are carbons in position alpha, beta, and gamma, so the constants 9.1, 9.4, and minus 2.5 are added. The contribution of an ester group in position delta is zero. Finally, the steric corrections are added. In this case, our methylene carbon B is bonded with a carbonyl, that is a quaternary carbon atom. So the constant minus 7.5 must be added. The chemical sheet for this carbon B is 36 ppm. As you can see, it is possible to calculate the chemical shift of almost all carbon atoms. In the next lessons, we are going to use the nomenclatures explained in this part and the tables to calculate chemical shift of carbon in different sequences, especially in polyolefins.